I like working in paper because paper is an unassuming material. We think we understand it. But if you can take that, that sheet and you can manipulate it and you can transform it into something where you go, oh wait, that's just paper. It's just a different experience of something that you think you know about, but you actually really don't. My name is Matthew Schlein. I'm an artist working with paper based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. I realized I wanted to do art at a very young age, and it wasn't, it wasn't like it chose me necessarily. I just, I wasn't particularly good at anything else. Um, I didn't have a plan B. I knew I was going to be an artist. I never necessarily ran towards financial stability. I, I think I went towards what I was good at and what brought me joy. I started taking apart pop-up books and figuring out how they worked, what that language was like. I have an affinity for geometry. I can understand things spatially. And so taking apart the books and learning that language uh, really started me on the path towards working with paper. When I tell people I work in paper, they immediately assume I do origami. I do not do origami. Um, in, in traditional origami, you start with a square and it's through folding that you derive form. You can't cut, you can't glue. And my background is what's called paper engineering, designing pop-up books. So uh, in my world, we can cut, we can glue, we can use computers and lasers and all kinds of other tools to make the work. And I think it opens up a lot more possibilities. And so my day-to-day -day is pretty varied. Some days I am working with scientists and, and prototyping things. They were able to use my art as a tool to visualize some of their scientific principles helps them design things like flexible solar cells or, or things that could fold on the microscopic and nano level. And then some days it's, you know, doing large scale pieces for uh, hospitals or for hotels or for galleries. It all sort of sits under the umbrella of, you know, curiosity and, well, what happens when I do this thing? Or how can I, you know, how can I make this idea manifest through paper? So the piece I did for Henry Ford uh, is a piece from my Oma Plata series. And so it's a piece that uses curve folding uh, in its construction. And, and curve folding is not something that's very often used in paper engineering or origami or kirigami. It becomes really complicated very quickly when you start to think about how these curves actually sit on the page and what they do to the paper. It creates these sort of sweeping motions. To me, it almost looks like um, text or typography, almost like a serif on a letter. It, maybe it looks like quilting or some kind of architectural element. The Oma Plata series, the name comes in, from a strange place. It's a maneuver in mixed martial arts where, I'm not a mixed martial artist, I should say this. You lock their arm using your legs, so one curve is happening in one direction and this other curve is happening in another direction and then they, they can't move and then basically someone's arm gets broken, I think. And I went, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing these multiple curves and what happens when they meet and they can't continue. And I thought, that's a perfect title, Oma Plata. So when I make a piece like this, generally it always starts with, with sketching, a sketchbook, you know, just um, trying to think about form and how this thing's gonna look compositionally. I always like to start with my hand. Once I have it uh, designed, I might bring it into AutoCAD or Rhino and try to do a dimensional rendering of this thing. And from there I'll unfold it. Um, so I'll have a three-dimensional model and then I'll try to unfold it, which never works out perfectly, but um, from there I can get what's called like a net type pattern. So I can figure out where my curves are, where my cut scores are, where my creases are. And then I will actually design it in CAD as if I'm looking down at a sheet of paper. So then the whole thing is cut out using one of these um, flatbed plotter cutters, which is like a laser cutter, but instead of a laser, it has a very small knife. And whatever I have on my screen, it can do a cut score, a crease, a perforation, whatever. And then once it's done being cut out, I then pull it off the, the machine, and then it's all hand assembled, hand glued, and then glued to a backing sheet. So it's, it's a fairly labor intensive process process. I really enjoy it. To me, it's meditative when I get to put the pieces together. I like that my work, that it gives people a sense of wonder, you know, that you see something and you're kind of at first, you know, you're not quite sure what it is you're looking at. It's a little bit uncanny. You know, you, you think, is that paper or what is that made from? How is this thing? What is this? And you want to, you want to experience it at multiple sort of viewpoints, right? When I make work, oftentimes I live with it for a short time while I'm making it and then it exists in the world. And for me, it was important to do this piece for the Cancer Pavilion. Um, I have Crohn's disease. I spent a lot of time in hospitals and 
oftentimes hospitals are really miserable <laughs> and they don't think about the visual aspect of what it is to be in a place like that. And it sounded like they were really putting art at the forefront. They were making an experience where they use art as a way to take you out of what you're going through in a sense. Like it, it's at least a, a respite visually so that you're not reminded of where you are while this is happening, right? I thought like what better use for art is there? 